All right, let's everybody grab their bulletins. Fathers who follow God point their children in the right direction. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps, out of Proverbs 16. And then on the inside page, the strength of a man, 1 Corinthians 16. Some years ago, I found myself in an elevator with a couple of men. It was late at night, and we all looked weary. The elevator came to a stop, and a larger-than-life cowboy ambled in. Wearing a battered hat, an old stained sheepskin coat, and run-down logger boots, he looked us up and down, met our eyes, and growled, Good evening, men. All of us straightened up and squared our shoulders. We were trying to live up to the name. On this day, which is given over to honoring guys, let's talk about living up to the name man. We try to be strong and macho, but oftentimes it's just a facade. For all our efforts, we realize we don't measure up. Underneath the bravado, we host a, harbor a host of fears, insecurities, and shortcomings. Much of our manliness is pure bluff. Paul was man, man enough to admit it. We also are weak, he said. That's not pious chatter. It's a humbling fact. Yet in what seems to be a contradiction, Paul insists that we are to be men of courage. How can we be the strong person that God meant for us to be? Only by putting ourselves in God's hands and asking Him to make us that way through His power and enablement. Come, Lord, and give me courage, Thy conquering spirit give. Make me an overcomer, and power within me live. True strength is the power of God in the soul. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. 1 Corinthians 16. And on the back, a loving father. The parents were obviously weary from dragging their two energetic preschools through airports and airplanes, and now their final flight was delayed. As I watched the two boys running around the crowded gate area, I wondered how mom and dad were going to keep the little guys settled down for a half hour flight into Grand Rapids. When we finally boarded, I noticed that the father and one of the sons were in the seats behind me. Then I heard the weary father say to his son, why don't you let me read one of your storybooks to you? And during the entire flight, this loving father softly and patiently read to his son, keeping him calm and focused. In one of his psalms, David declared, As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth those who fear him. The word pitieth refers to showing love and compassion. This tender word gives us a picture of how deeply our Heavenly Father loves his children, and it reminds us what a great gift it is to be able to look at God and cry, Abba, Father. God longs for you to listen again to the story of his love for you when you are restless on your own journey through life. Your Heavenly Father is always near, ready to encourage you with his words. I rejoice in your presence and your love for me, Lord. Today I choose joy in knowing your love is constant and unchanging, forever fixed. God's great love for his child is one of his greatest gifts. Great bulletin. Right? Alright, I was looking for a joke this morning that had to do with fathers and sons, so I, I found this one. I haven't told it in a long time, so maybe some of you haven't heard it. But there was two young brothers, and they were always getting into trouble. Nothing serious, just messing around, goofing around, doing things they weren't supposed to do. But uh, the father was a uh, uh, very upset. After trying and trying and trying to settle settle his sons down, he 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 looked to his pastor, an old friend of his, and and he took his oldest boy to see the pastor. The pastor looked at him and heard about all the things they were getting into. You know, boy things, talking to school running around, doing this and that. So he took the oldest boy in his office and he said, Son, take a seat. And the pastor just looked at him and stared at him for about two minutes. And the boy was just kind of getting nervous and looking at him. And finally the pastor said, Where is God? And then it was silent for a couple of minutes. And again the pastor said, Where is God? And the young boy was kind of getting a little bit scared. You know, he's like, wouldn't say nothing. 
Then finally again, the pastor said, where is God? And the young boy was so scared, he jumped up and ran out the door, ran home, went home, went and talked to his brother, and he said, hey, hey, Timmy, he said, uh, uh, God's missing, and they're trying to pin it on us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a good Father's Day joke, I think. Anyway, happy Father's Day to all, all the fathers out there. And what's cool is uh, we have an awesome Heavenly Father. And He loves us so much that He would give up His Son on the cross. I heard a, 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 a preaching on this a long time ago. and There was a guy who was in charge of uh, you know, the bridges that go up and down. And he was in charge of you know, making the bridge go up and down. And his young son had got trapped somehow down underneath with all the gears and everything. And uh, the father had a choice to make. He could either bring that, that, that bridge up and his son would probably perish, save a bunch of people as the boat was coming through, or he could leave the leave the bridge there and a bunch of people would die and the boat would crash and probably a bunch of more people would die and he, he chose to raise the bridge and he gave up his son to save those people. It's kind of a picture of what, what our father did with Jesus. He saw that we were in trouble and he gave up his only begotten son. I still, I, I, I love Robert Morris. He's so good. And uh, I like what he said one time. He said, he said, I still haven't got over being saved. And I think I could say the same thing. I still haven't got over it. It's still amazing grace to me. I'm still amazed every morning I wake up that I'm, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I'm still amazed every day I go to bed thanking and praising Him. All you have to do is look at the cross to see how much we're loved. That he would give his son Jesus. Not only, we, we always think of the cross, the crucifixion, but I always look at the Roman scourge that he went through and the whipping and the beating that he took as it ripped his body apart. If you ever want to really get a, a movie that depicts really what probably actually happened, go get The Passion. Uh, it's not for little kids, but you, you, will, you will feel different after watching that show. You will kind of see what Jesus did. It will... It will it will, uh, it will touch it. Um, but I, I want us to go to a scripture. And we're all here. We're saved and, and we know this. But we go to Romans 8, verse 31 and 32. You know, I... People say, you know, the well, the Bible kind of says the same things over and over and over again, and, and and I won't disagree with that. But you know what? We need to hear it over and over and over and over again, uh, especially when we're going through a tough time. Especially when we're going through a tough time. But I, I love Romans eight, um, thirty-one and thirty-two. Paul said, what shall we say then to these things? He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? God is for us. He's for us. He's on our side. We, we, we aren't walking through things by ourselves. We're not going through the valley by ourselves. He is for us. Who can be against us? And then he that spared not his own son, Jesus, on the cross, but he delivered him up for us. That's just an awesome statement. He sent him to the cross for us. How shall he not with him, with Jesus, also freely give us all things? <sighs> Jesus paid for it all. Everything we have, he paid for on the cross. Not only our gift of eternal life, but he paid for the strength of God that strengthens us when we need it. His joy that he freely gives us when we're going through a tough time. A peace that passes all understanding. That we don't know how we can be at peace during this trial and tribulation and storm we're going through. And yet he gives us a peace to calm us down. I like one saying. said 
he not only calms the storm in the sea, but better than that, he calms the storm in me. You know, right now <laughs> we're in the storm. We're in the storm, take, taking care of my mom and dad, and then you guys have been through those storms. I understand now what Chris has been going through. I didn't. I, I had sympathy for him before, but I I never been through it, and I see now what it is. And we see people that have already gone through that. You know, many of us here have, have lost their parents or lost their fathers or lost a loved one. And um, it's, it's hard, but he gives us a, a peace. He gives us his help. Paul tells us to go to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. His help is real. I love with Psalms it says, it looks, yeah, I look to the hills to where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. He's a, he's a help. He helps. He's, I, I couldn't do what I'm doing right now without all, all the help he's pouring into me. It's just, it's crazy. I mean, the other day, I, I was going to spend the night. I called Zach and said, I can't do it. I was so crushed. I was so down. I was so, I felt like everything was falling apart, you know. And uh, I told Zach I was going to, I spent the night Thursday, and I said, I can't do it another night. And Zach came to the rescue and spent that night and, and by the next day I felt good again but it, the pressure I mean you know I can't even imagine you know like Chris talks about his mom and what he went through and depression and that and other people have too you know I've seen Dominic's dad go through that and, and Kevin's mom and dad and Rita just with Bill and and uh, I'm missing anybody John and his family and John and John and you know we've all been through it you know we've we it's 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 more than you can handle. You can't get through it by yourself. I, I feel sorry for these people that don't have Jesus because <laughs> I can see why people fall apart. I can. I really can. Because if it wasn't for him holding me together, I'd be falling apart right now. Then he gives us his comfort. We talked about that a few weeks ago. He, he comforts us in our times of trouble. He gives us his understanding because a lot of times we want, we want to know why. Job even wanted to know why, 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 why. So it, sometimes we're not going to know why. Sometimes he gives us an understanding of why. One of the best verses, the most incredible verses I, I've seen. If I, I, if I had to take one verse in the Bible and tell you this is the most incredible verse, I would think this might be it. If we go to John 17. John 17. The first time I read it, I had to read it like ten times because I couldn't believe that I was reading what I was reading and I thought I misunderstood it and I couldn't figure out what he really meant. John 17, Jesus is praying for his disciples or his followers. And then he says in verse 20, he says, neither I pray, neither pray I for these alone, not the people that are just follow me here, he said, but them also which shall believe on me through their words. And that's us. Through the words of Paul, through the words of John, through the words of Peter, through the words of James. That's us. So he says, neither do I pray for them alone. We got Jesus praying for us. We got Jesus praying. Do we understand the power of prayer? One prayer gives you eternal life. Without saying that prayer gives you eternal damnation. When you ask Jesus to save you, that's the power of prayer. Can you imagine Jesus praying for us? Can you imagine the power in what he's praying? Can you imagine where you'd be if he wasn't praying for you? <laughs> yeah. Can you think about that? And then he says, verse 22, And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. God has given us his glory. That they may be one even as we are one. That, that's God's purpose for his people, to be one. If you're part of this church, I hope you're one with us. There's some people that float through and they never become one with us. But most of us here are, are, are here. We're one. You know, We're not going nowhere. We become one. And that's God's plan for us. And then here's the most incredible verse, I think, in the whole Bible. Jesus said, I am in them, as Jesus is in us. When we get saved, we ask Jesus to save us. He comes and lives inside of us. He said, I am in them, thou in me, the Father is in Jesus, that they may be made perfect in one, 
and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. He's speaking to the Father now. He's praying to the Father. He said that the world will know that you sent me, Father, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. He just said the Father loves us just as he loves Jesus. That's one of the most incredible statements in the whole Bible. That our Father loves us the same as he loves Jesus. Think about it. He loves Jesus. The same way he loves us. He loves us the same way he loves Jesus. That, 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 I got I can't wrap my head around that. I've read it hundreds and hundreds of times. I still don't know if I really get it. It's awesome. I just accept it and believe it. We have many examples of godly fathers in the Bible. We see how much Abraham loved Isaac, his son. He sent his servant out to a far country to bring it back his wife Rebecca for him. Think about Noah, how much he loved his family. Spent 120 years building that ark to save his family. Think of all the ridicule he must have went through. As he told them, God's judgment was coming, it was going to rain. You know what? It had never rained on the earth until then. It had never rained. It's going to rain. Oh, what's rain? The water's going to come from out of heaven. That ain't never happened before. You're an idiot. What are you building, spending all your time building that? Hour? I bet he got made fun of every day. But yet he stayed on it and worked on it for 120 years. And he saved his family. Father's, father's love is sacrificial love. If you can't see it, when, when the God the Father gave up Jesus, you can see it in Noah, you can see it in Abraham. You can see it in Jacob, how much he loved Joseph. And when he found out and was lied to that Joseph died, he said he was going to mourn all his days, and he did. He mourned for years and years and years until he came and found Joseph was alive in Egypt. We say the, see the great love that David had for his son Solomon. How about the son that passed away that he had with Bathsheba. He laid on the floor for three days praying to God to save his son. I love the story of the prodigal son. As the son didn't have nothing to do with his dad, he just wanted his money and he left. But every day his father come out and looked and looked and looked and looked and see if his son was coming. Every day he would go out to the hills and see, is my son coming back? He missed him so much. He loved him so much. And then one day when he did come back, it said the father went running to him. See, we don't, we don't understand that. In, in Jewish customs, an older man, he don't run. <laughs> he don't run. That's undignified. But this father didn't care. He ran. He jumped on him. He kissed him on the neck. And he threw a big party for him. Even in the Ten Commandments, God tells us how important fathers are. The fifth commandment, fifth, we know the number of blessing. It's the only command that has a blessing on it. It says to honor thy fathers and thy mothers. It's the only commandment that has a blessing on it. It's the fifth commandment. It's, that's how much God thinks about fathers. God designed fathers to be a, an image of him. Like Chris was talking about. He wants us to be an image of him because he's the perfect father. And if we want to be perfect like he is, then we have to be like him. I, I love the word father. In Hebrew, it's Abba. Abba. It's made up of, of, of two letters, al Alpha and Bet. Alpha means the first, the first in rank. Father's the first in rank in the house. And Bet means house. The leader of the house. The leader of the house. The spiritual leader of the house. He's the one that's in charge. Not the wife. Not the kids. I love, uh, there's another pastor I like, Steve Furtick. If you're ever watching, it, will make you laugh. He said, it's sad when your kids have to ask you, are we going to church? He said, my kids don't ask me that. They know we're going. 
He says, because I want to be the spiritual leader that God made me to be. Because I want my kids to be blessed as much as it can possibly be. Because that's what's going to happen. I love that song you guys sing. I want to be like Jesus because he's going to be like me. Man. I see the heartache out there of these young kids without no direction. And and who knows what they're following, what they're doing, you know, the drugs and alcohol and sex and everything out there. It's, it's a crazy world out there. We, we need to be the spiritual fathers, the spiritual leaders that our kids need. That, that's God's plan for us, to be the spiritual head of your family. We want our children to be blessed so much, but yet we don't we don't bring in God's plan. We just don't. Not like we should. Not like we should. Our our kids at church every week we can't can't they can't miss school. They can't miss sports. They can't miss this. They can't miss that. But it's all right to miss church. Well, you better know your arithmetic and your math and your, and your English and your language, but they don't know the Bible. Jesus is supposed to be number one, but so many things are, are, not, are more number one in our lives that shouldn't be. You know, money or, or whatever you want to throw in there. There's a guy here that used to go to church here. I love the guy with all my heart. God did, saved his whole family and did some great miracles in his life, and right now his God is money. I don't know if he's listening or not, but it ain't going to be good for him. I try to talk to him and talk to him about coming to church, and it's all about money. When you're God's money, I'll tell you what, it's, it's not going to be good. Oh. He's away making money all the time while his, his, his family's not coming to church, probably not in the Bible. I don't know what he thinks is going to happen, but it ain't going to be good. Let's, let's go see what God's plan for the house is, okay? Let's, let's see what God says about the house, all right? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I, I love going there. The Jews call it the Shema. Shema means to hear. That means to pay attention and listen. And God says, pay attention and listen to this. I don't know if a whole lot of Christian houses are like this, but this is what God's plan for the Christian house is supposed to be. Look what he says. Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's not a coincidence. In the, it's in the fifth book of the Bible. Because Deuteronomy is quoted by Jesus more than anything, any other uh, book in the Bible. It said, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments with the Lord our God commanded to teach you. He, he, this God says, I've commanded these to, to, to you. That you might do them in the land where you go to possess it. That's a promised land. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. To keep all his statutes, his commandments, which I command thee this day. Thou and thy son and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life. That thy days may be prolonged. Long life. Promise. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. I, I wish we could get this. I really do. Because this is God's plan for our house. That it may be well with thee. Are we getting that? God said, when you follow my plan, so it will be well with you. Do you want it to be well with your kids? Because if you're the father and the spiritual father, this is, this is the plan he's given you. There's no other plan. There's no other plan. This is it right here. That it may be well with you. That it may be well with your, your marriage and your family and your kids. That it may be well with you. And then look what he says. And that ye may increase mightily. As the Lord God of the fathers has promised. Thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. There's going to be abundance. Abundant life. And again Shema. Shema means to hear. God's saying here listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Is he your Lord? Or is he just your Savior? Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I say? 
that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll, you'll keep my commandments. He said, those that don't love me, don't keep my commandments. So love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. That's the Father's responsibility right there. We have Sunday school for the kids here, but that's not our church. Is not, it's not the church's responsibility. We have Sunday school so we can teach the kids on a level. The most important thing about having the kids over there is so you can sit down and hear the message. That's the most important thing. So you can hear the message, then you can take it home and teach it to your kids. And sure, they learn about Jesus, and we try to have fun things for them, and we want to make church fun for them. But the most important thing is that you get the message, that you're not listening to your kid talking, and I want some water, i got to go to the bathroom. We, we, we want you to get the message so you could take it home and bring it to your kids. Thou shalt teach them diligently. Diligently. Do we know what diligently means? It's the opposite of casual. It's the opposite of cats. Do we teach them diligently? Teach the word of God diligently unto your children. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest in the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Talking about the word of God all day long in your house. That's God's plan. That it may be well with you. That it may be well with you. Verse 8, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thy eye. And we know about that. The Jews would wrap a strap with a box on their hand and wrap a strap with a box on. It represented that your hand is always doing the work of God and that your mind is always on the word of God. And thou shalt write them upon the post of the house and on the gates. That's the mezuzah that they would put up on their post. It's a little box with God's word on it, and they would put scripture in there. That's God's plan for our house. If we were following that plan, the Bible says He gives us a promise that it'll be well with you. See, when I was growing up, I had a great dad. But he didn't know the Bible. I had an awesome dad. I, I love my dad so much. He blessed us so much. He was a great father. He took care of his family. He sacrificed for his family. He loved us. He worked hard for us. Usually he was working two jobs to, to give us a life that he never had. He coached our, our baseball teams when we were younger. and He taught us how to be good, honest, hardworking men. And he loved his, his family so much. But you know what? He, he, he always, we always went to church. God was always there. God was number one in his life. And even though he didn't know the Bible and he couldn't share the Bible with us like, like, like we can now, he thought he was doing the best he could. And now that he can't take care of himself anymore, I'll, I'll take care of him. If I have to spend 20, 30, 40 hours a week, I'll take care of him. I'm glad we got help. I'm glad Zach, Zach's helped me out a lot. and We got Sylvia and Rhonda. And Carol, Carol helped out so much. You know, Lauren, Lauren's been out, Lauren gets on the computer. She's the, she's the bloodhound that finds out all the things we can get, getting help from the vets and stuff like that. I don't know how to get that stuff or do that stuff. But I know I'm just praying, praying, praying for help because God will always provide. He always has. That's how great our Heavenly Father is. He always provides. What's really cool is uh, I don't have any kids of my own. Um, that's just the way it worked out. I was busy running around like an idiot. wasn't interested in settling down until I got saved. But I always had kids in my life. Steve, boys, when we lived, we lived in a duplex, as soon as they were old enough to climb up the stairs, they'd be up every day. I could hear their footprints coming up the stairs, man, and we, it was fun up at Uncle Bill's house. 
you know, we got pizza, ice cream. We'd always get uh, wrestling. I always get the pay-per-view. They invite a couple of their friends over. We get all the furniture, move it in a circle, and we'd have a big uh, free-for-all battle royal in the middle of my living room until somebody got hurt, and then we have to sit and watch the rest of the wrestling. But we did that all the time. Uh, I've always had friends who's had kids. They, I just, I love kids. I mean, just, just something about kids. I mean, it's just my buddies' kids and stuff. They're just had really good times with them. I enjoyed them so much. And then I met Patty, and we got married, and we got Kevin and Jennifer, now Lauren and. And uh, I've always been blessed with kids. We all, we took care of Will when he was little. Now he's got two kids of his own. Took care of Henry. Luke Luke was my right hand man. Then he grew up and he left me. He left me stranded. The Levi had to come in and fill his shoes. Now Levi is my right hand man. I'm trying to keep him keep him from growing up because I don't want to lose him. Now Jake, Shyla, Nova. Jake's gonna have. His own baby in in August. Um, I've been so blessed with kids, even the kids of this church. You know, I remember when Con I remember praying for Connor when he was in the hospital. Connor and Hannah, we prayed so hard for them when they were in the hospital and they grew up. Now he's bigger than me. You know, uh, the kids of this church are special. Bella, Bella's been here. What, 50 years? 60? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Who's that back there? Remember when you were that age? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, Mia was little and boy. All the memories. Miss these kids. I, I get in trouble when I start naming, so I better, you know. Just try to make sure justice, just special, special kids. Jennifer and Spence, Spencer, just special kids. I told you the story about Jennifer and Spencer. Jennifer, uh, or Jenny, Jenny, you know, Spencer was big and he probably wasn't treated well. And first time he came to fellowship, he said, Mom, you think the kids will like me? You think they'll play with me? And uh, they had them write cards one time, and, and I made it really special. I do with all the kids, but I'd made a really special effort for him to build him up so he was felt comfortable and liked here. And he wrote me a card for, for Pastor's Appreciation. He said, thank you for being my buddy, B-U-T-T-Y. So I'm his buddy. I won't ask you to turn there, but if you want to just think about it, Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. It says, he shall turn, God, speaking of God, he shall turn the heart of the father to the children and the heart of the children to the father. It's a spiritual thing, you guys. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. God wants us to, to have that same loving relationship with our, with our kids as he, as he has with his kids. And our Heavenly Father is, is the perfect example that, that every man should follow. Uh, giving his best for his family. Sacrificial love. Spiritually leading his family, providing for his family, defending and protecting his family. And I want to tell you about God's great plan. We just finished up Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21. <sighs> tell you the truth, I'm tired of this world. <laughs> I hope the rapture happens before we even leave here, I'm ready to go home. I'm beat. I'm wore out. I can't know if I can take it no more. But we got something to look forward. If we go to Revelation chapter 20, 21. Jesus is talking about the new heaven, new earth that he's going to set up. And look what it says in verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I can't wait. I can't wait. I remember when I was talking to Luke. Remember Luke when you were little and I gave you a ride home every day and he was looking at tracks and that? 
And I was telling him about, there was a track about the devil, and he goes, does he look like that, Papa? And I said, well, he's just ugly, and he's just ugly. And, and uh, I told him about Armageddon, and we're coming back with Jesus on horses and swords and coming back and fighting and taking over the, the earth back. And he goes, you mean we're going to ride with Jesus on horses and swords and battle the bad guys? He goes, Papa, I can't wait. I can't wait. And you call now. Levi's over there. Levi puts his hands together, puts his head down and prays. So if you want some really strong prayers, call us when we got Levi. <laughs> but don't call at nap time because we turn the phone off. Levi, I got your I got your number one fan. Happy Father's Day. This this what it's all about, you guys. It's it's just about the love that we have for each other and and uh it all starts with the father it all starts with the father i love that song i want to be like like jesus because my son wants to be like me I, I, I can't say it any better let's bow our heads holy father mighty god we thank you so much lord for all you've done and bless us with lord just thank you so much for the, this church and and the godly men that we have here lord this world's hard, it's tough, it's rough, but Lord, we have a, a God who will help us get through the hard times. Fill us with his strength and his joy, his His uh, peace. All that we need, Lord, to be more than conquerors, Lord. And as we go through difficult times, Lord, we really need to help each other, pray for each other, be there for each other. Do all we can, Lord, to help carry other person's load, Lord. That's what you called us to be, especially fathers, Lord. Um, take care of your family. Take care of your wife, your kids. Um, do all we can, Lord, that it may be well with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alrighty, um, I just got a text from my daughter. If you could just keep uh, them and my um, uh, my nephews in prayer because they were called to their dad's hospital bed and um, she had to go get her youngest son and uh, get him there this morning. Anyway, um, we'll uh, sing Family of God <laughs> on page 282 in the hymnal. <clears throat> if I can. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. For oh, part of the family, the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Joined us with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family. The family of God. 